The coup in Niger adds to a growing list of military-led administrations in the Sahel region. Let's take a look at some of these nations. Burkina Faso experienced two coups in 2022. President Ibrahim Traore removed military leader Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Damiba in September. This was after the ouster of President Rokma Kabure earlier in the year. Over in Guinea, Colonel Mamadi Dumbuya was sworn in as president in September 2021, and that was less than a month after unseating his predecessor, Alpha Conde. Meanwhile, in Mali, President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita was overthrown by Colonel Asimi Goita in August 2020. Seven months into a transition back to civilian rule, the military removed the interim president and prime minister. Goita now serves as acting president. Sudan, that is currently embroiled in conflict, has been under military rule since 2021 after a military and civilian power sharing authority was dissolved. This came two years after soldiers overthrew longtime leader Omar al-Bashir. Let's discuss these events further. We are joined by David Otto Endley, the director for the Geneva Center for Africa Security and Strategic Studies based in Abuja, Nigeria. Uh, David, thank you very much for joining us. Why is the Sahel vulnerable to coups and military takeovers? Well, this is a very key point. Um, and as you mentioned in your introduction, uh, it's not just the Sahel, uh, because of course uh, we've seen uh, military coup d'etats uh, in, in countries like Sudan, even in Zimbabwe. Uh, and charge where you know where we experience military coups but the reasons are very clear and you know numerous in terms of uh, what causes this coup d'etat one of the key reasons you know is that if you look at the actors i mean the people who are carrying out this coup um you would notice that in all the countries that you've mentioned uh, it is the military uh, and that tells you that um the military is too close to power uh, so um they see an opportunity that there is vulnerability within the political and leadership se uh, sectors uh, and the pouncing. So one of the reasons is that most of these countries, you know, have brought the military uh, too close to power. And this is one of the things that the Nigerian government has done uh, to distance, you know, the military uh, away from, um, you know, carrying out coup d'etats as they did in the past. Uh, the second reason um, is that, you know, there is what you call over promise and under delivery uh, when it comes to political leadership. Leaders have promised uh, to um, galvanize the economy, uh, to you know, boost up the, the security in the country, uh, to deal with corruption. Once they fail to do that, the military again uh, will take opportunity of the people that make complaints and then you know um, take power away from them. The other reason is that there is um, a high number of foreign intervention, especially in the cases that we've seen in the Sahel, uh, where external uh, actors you know uh, want to play geopolitics. You know, they either promote uh, directly or indirectly. Um, you know, this uh, military leadership, you know, uh, to take power. Um, again, you know, the last reason is that, um, uh, you know, coups, you know, have a way of um, encouraging other coups to happen, you know. So in the case of Mali and Burkina Faso, um, it is very clear that the Nigerian uh, junta has used the same template. You know, they've also used the same reasons or excuse or justification uh, why they carry out the coup. So the reasons are numerous. Um, uh, and, um, you know, this is, you know, what we've seen in, in terms of these countries that have military good desires. All right. So in the light of all of that that you've listed for us, what do you think needs to be done to minimize this trend? You've just got to do what you call reverse engineering. Um, look at the reasons why um, these military uh, coups are happening uh, and then try to distance, for example, the military away from power. Um, you know, make sure that um, you know, uh, leaders do not, uh, you know, uh, commit what you call constitutional coups, you know, to either change the constitution to run for 10 terms or, you know, when, you know, uh, leaders have to be held accountable for what they promise um, so that when they do not deliver, there are consequences. Uh, you've got to also, um, you know, uh, bring in uh, regional partners like the African Union and the, and the um, uh, and ECOWAS, for example, uh, to be able to come up with what you call coup-proof mechanisms, you know, um, whereby, you know, they could early, uh, you know, in, before a coup happens, you know, detect it and try and prevent it from happening. ECOWAS has already done that. You know, they have what you call early warning centers that they've established. But most of these centers, you know, are still very ineffective. Uh, another thing uh, is to try and educate the population. What we've seen in most of these coups is that, you know, the coup planners or the coup beneficiaries depend uh, a lot on the reaction of the population. Once the population is in for a coup, um, it gives them a lot of energy and confidence to continue with the scoops. 
So it's all about education, 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 and practical action. All right, uh, David, b before I let you go, let me just ask you one more question because we've had a tough talking ECOWAS issue a list of sanctions they are going to place on Niger, a list of which actually includes military force if they do not reinstate uh, President Bazoum. We've also heard from the French saying that they will also uh, use force should their interest in the country be attacked. We're hearing from the junta in Niamey saying they do not want any foreign interference. Do you think what we're hearing from ECOWAS is tough enough to make the junta actually give in to their demands? Let me tell you, um, nobody encourages a coup, uh, but from military and strategic perspective, um, the time when you can have a military intervention is the, is the 24 hours once that coup is happening. After 48 hours, um, any military intervention, you know, is going to be suicidal. Um, I do not think that ECOWAS wants to go that route. I don't think the French wants to go that route, especially as in the case of Niger Republic, they have the population or majority of it, um, you know, back in the coup, uh, singing anti-French sentiment. Um, you don't want to go into a country that perhaps has some kind of a united, uh, you know, military and security agency front. The army has backed the coup plotters, you know, from the presidential guard. So effectively, um, the entire country is perhaps, you know, I'm, I know there are people who are um, anti-coupies, uh, who are saying that the coup is wrong. But effectively, if you go into a war, um, in Niger, for example, you know, to try and remove the junta on the basis um, that um, you want to restore uh, a democratic process, it will be a bloodbath. And we do not want the region of Africa uh, to experience uh, such a thing at this point in time. We already have a problem in Sudan, in the instability in Libya, a, a crisis in Central Africa Republic. We do not want another crisis in the region of West Africa. I believe that non-kinetic measures, you know, should be prioritized by ECOWAS and the African Union.